The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, first trading day of the new month, December, December 1, and we're looking at, at 10.06 a.m. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. The Dow's at 3.23, had a massive red candle yesterday. It's been alternating between green, red, green, red, with lower highs and lower lows. It hit the Chevron Wave inside wedge support target line. Uh, that's that has a price projection if there is weakness in the next two days and I'll, I'll discuss that in a moment key support would be the left side right side price time match of the 13th of October to the 34,111 area has something really bad has to happen to get there by the date would be the third that is from by Friday um, could be even Monday. But what's really important here is when you look, and let me just run the numbers, 1,312 to 34,796. S&P is up actually very nicely. It's up 63 points. And uh, the nine period did cross negative yesterday underneath the 14. It went pink. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is very weak at 26%. Uh, the unbalanced volume Still very good, but pulled back like we expected it to do. You've got your peak E, the right, left side, right side. Um, the the measurement in the vertical aspect with the MACD strong on the, what was that? Was that November the 7th or something like that? November the 5th. Uh, the MACD was strong. The 9 was way above the 14. The stochastic was way up in the 95% area. On balance volume was at a high. And that all said, that is fantastic. Peak D, a minor pullback, pulls back three sessions uh, to the just above the 14 period moving average to the 9 period moving average. It walks the 9 EMA for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 days. Goes to a peak E at 47, 43. 0.83 on the 22nd of November. Remember, peak D is where you start becoming a little bit cautious, especially at E. You watch to see if the negatives are in place. And lo and behold, we got some kind of a signal on the very next session as we made a peak E. MACD was fading stochastic, but I said, watch out, that 9 period moving average is still strong. And lo and behold, finally, it took all these sessions and a plunge down to the 45, 50s. Uh, from 47, 43, I mean, that's 200 points uh, to to see that nine period move down. And here we are tackling it right at this moment as we speak up of the um, uh, 66 at 46.33. Uh, that is so far a very good rebound. I'll talk about this in a moment, uh, the, the aspect that I think so far I have to consider that those weekly charts are very important. Now you're looking at uh, the QQQs lagging a little bit, uh, up certainly up nicely, 5.22 at 399.07 as the Invesco QQQ Trust Series, which is the Index 100 trading vehicle, uh, rallies quite nicely, but it hasn't gone above that peak A that was a uh, leg A. If it'll be a peak, if there's no new high above 401.19 in the next two days, we're watching this really closely because I had said that in the patterns that we always follow, one of the absolutely key uh, formations that we're looking at in this time frame is the sharp move down and then a bounce. And if that bounce fails at a peak A or a B and then comes down and takes out the left side low, that is very negative. So far, we've started some pullback, but that's all there is. This, this, this is the pattern we're looking for if it's going to break down. And the pattern, if it's successful and, and you see a push in the uh, Q, Q, Q above 402, that's really good action. There's no question about it. Um, let's go on. We're going to look at, um, we'll wait for the end of the day tomorrow. We'll talk about the monthly charts. We have to really wait for the end of the day to see how we've started off the month. And we're looking at the IWM had a massive decline from 244s on the 8th of no, uh, November down to yesterday's low. I think that was two. I don't think I updated that. That should have been, yeah, 21588. Wow. 215. That is a really sharp pullback. Five, 
88. Um, and that's a 30 point decline. What is it about uh, 13%, 14%? What we are looking at here is that the day's spike to the upside is extremely impressive. Uh, it's trading up 2.55%. It's up 5.55. 233.76. I don't know. The gap is going to be serious uh, resistance. And what I'm going to do right now, and I need to talk about this, is in another couple of moments before I forget. The volatility index yesterday reached uh, a, a very high level, a high enough level to say, even though it was only a peak B, at 28.99. Let me just double check. 28.99. 28.99, the high of the 26th of November. So let me put that in, 28.99. And then I usually put what it is, and what it is is uh, um, it's COVID, as always. We, are, we just call it COVID, slash uh, Fed. Fed said they're going to uh, come a little quicker into the, the area of uh, um, raising rates. I have to tell you something. With this particular market, if you were a Fed officer, would you be saying, hey, this is the time to do it? On, in any other, I've been saying for ages, they should have just done it. And, I mean, the demand has been there. The economy has actually been way stronger than people talk about. They should have just been, if they needed to raise it, they should have been doing it instead of warning, warning, warning. Because as they're warning, all of a sudden you've got this whole COVID aspect and, all, uh, and the, this huge market vol volatility. I mean, we've seen some stocks, key stocks, tr plummet 20, 30, even 40 percent. Yes, the indices have held very well because they've been held by the apples, just a handful of stocks. I mean, Apple up at an all time high, up at, up at 167.94. It's only leg C in the daily chart. I'm calling it a leg F in the weekly and leg G to C in the monthly. I mean, you just need a handful. Of, what is it? Five. Uh, five uh, Nasdaq, no, five, yes, Nasdaq stocks are, are really 20 or so percent or 25 percent or maybe more. What was it again? Uh, a huge percentage of the QQQs. I mean, I mean, that's crazy. No, I think it's even bigger. Anyway, so let's go on. We're going to look at the TLT. This is the bonds, the yields. The bonds are trading down $1.61 at $149.98. It's in the higher range. You see this cup formation. What happens in this cup formation? Prices tend to want to keep going towards the high, and then does it act as a repellent zone as well, or does it pierce the upside to go one to one to the upside? All I can say is that if there is a trade in the next two weeks in the yield in the, in the TLT, the Lehman 20 year Treasury Bond Fund, above 153.80. 154.30, just somewhere in that range. If it goes above that, those yields are coming down. I don't know what the Fed's going to do. They'll be doing it by themselves. Um, yes, in the den, uh, we're talking about MU. MU, this is a micron, has been fantastic. It's just recycled. It's just G slash C. By the way, it's acting the data. It looks like it could be a C. Uh, I'm going to put G slash C. Alternate count. Look at the SMHs. We had been short. We kind of broke even. But we're not in it right now. Now we're just waiting. Uh, this is still a leg eight. Great A to the upside. Great eight feet to the time high. Great to the east. Twenty two up nine point three four. Up. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, so on the, on the phone, couldn't hold on, we had Jim in Florida, I want to know about UNG. UNG is United States National Gas Fund, plummeting yet again, down 83 cents at 1424, down over 5%. Now, when stocks or instruments that be tradables that we are looking at start to make lower lows and lower highs in a very consistent fashion, mm -hmm. throat again. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me do that again. Ah, good. And it goes under the 200 period moving average. I try to draw trend lines. And the trend lines I'm drawing right now, it's that channel. You know, I love channels. I, I've been drawing channels for 40 years or so. Uh, ever since I had the handbooks that I used to go to, wherever I went, I would take them with and I just sit there drawing channels with my ruler and pencil. And of course, when everything got automated, that made it so much easier. And now what we're looking at is these trend lines, I call this chat wave inside track support line or propellant line. And it's trading right in it and it's under the 200 period moving average. And what is it saying? It's saying natural gas. And you would expect very often, oil goes one way, natural go gas goes the other way. Not for a long period of time, but they tend very often to go in opposite directions. I'm not sure quite what the connection or disconnection is, but that's what happens. In this particular instance, you've got crude oil, CL, also just underneath the 200 period moving average, having a little bit of a bounce today, having gone from 85.41. We, we timed the SCO short just perfectly about one and a half points of that recovery high in the in the 83s 83.35 the high was actually 85.41 and we only took a little bit of we, we had a nice gain but wow if we just kept that that sco went from uh, the 12 uh, area that we got in 12.75 to yesterday's high of 17.58 uh, timing was great but the actual implementation of the stop was just a tad to tighten and we never got back in so now let's go back to this i'll try to be as objective as possible ung so the question is uh let's see what the question is oh, the, oh i don't know what the question is because he just wanted me to to um to what count to the downside do you have on UNG? So I have 
I'll do this live, so it's, you know, that's what we do all the time. At peak G top, now you've got A, trough A, trough B, trough C. That just missed, that's D. And that could be a recycle, A, B, but I just like to continue in sequence, why not? E and F. I've got a leg F to the downside. The stochastic actually was improving a little bit. It's at 24%. It was under 20%. On balance volume is shocking. It's just horrible. I've never seen such a low one. Um, well, not for a long time, not since August, uh, in the natural gas, UNG. And if we're looking at the MACD, it deflected lower. So this W formation sometimes can produce a good rally. So the question is, where can it go to? Well, this has to do with all sorts of things. It has to do with the weather. It has to do with supply. You know, I think today is Wednesday. Don't we get some kind of supply? Uh, um, is it natural gas or is it crude oil? At 10.30, maybe someone will help me because I only got eight, eight, 10 minutes to go. What we're really looking at is I would prefer not to try to try to time the low, because remember we used to have Gigi and the Goofy Golfer, again, the down late Goofy Golfer. I used to sell uh, steel gloves to all of those who wanted to uh, catch a falling knife, and this is exactly the falling knife situation. All I can say is, within the context of the daily week, if this was a stock, I would say you could have a trade to the upside. I don't see a position yet. And look at that monthly chart, unbelievable. I mean, we've gone from the 8s to the 22 level, all the way back down to the 14s. This is ugly. Ugly doesn't mean to say that you can't turn around and have a pretty decent rally. So all I'm going to say is, I would if, if you're in it, you've got to put a stop somewhere. You can always make up that money when it starts to make higher highs and higher lows. You don't want to sit there. Um, we just had in the den, I, if, I, if I'm mistaken, I don't always get a chance to read in the den, but what I did see something about snowfall, I think it was in Colorado, it was the warmest they've had, 70 degrees or something, less than an inch so far of snow. All I can say is that with all, don't listen to the talk about the weather. Look at the charts, and the charts are saying, hmm, I wonder what heating oil is doing. Do I have it? Is that HO? Let me just see. Yeah, heating oil. Look at this. Heating oil is the same thing. It went to a peak D in the continuous contract right there in mid-October. And that was in the two point, just under 2.60. And lo and behold, we're at 2.09 right now. So rather look at the charts. And the charts are saying, thus far, not looking out, but thus far, the weather has not been the kind of weather that produces, and this should be an alternate count, E slash B, does not produce the kind of spike to the upside that you normally get starting at about late late November, early December, uh, with prices going much higher. So you're going to have to wait a little bit. If you're in it, I'd put a tight stop. Let me just money protection and money management is absolutely imperative. Don't get caught up saying, oh, you know, it's the winter coming, blah, 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 blah. Look at the chart. The chart says if you've been long, you've been wrong. And that's just as simple as that. It doesn't mean to say that tomorrow or the next day if it starts to move up and you are long, you are wrong because that's right. But at this particular point, it's had three gaps to the downside. Oh, is it ready for a bounce? Absolutely, it's ready for a bounce. Look at the 120 minutes, Sean. I don't see anything even in the 120. So if you're looking for an entry point, let's look at it. Give me a yell when we're looking at a plus not down 81 cents, but a plus 1.1 or higher. That's what you want to see. Or two two days of plus 50 and then plus 60. Then we want to look at it and say, oh, okay, have we made a turn? Is this important? You're in the inside track of a down channel, but you've made much lower highs and, and lower lows, and that makes that whole area in the midpoint where all the 9 the 14 period moving average at 14.93, 16.32, that is way high. But you know that this moves very quickly both up and down. So all I'm saying is hold off for now. If you want to go long, um, oh, I would rather use options if you can. I'd rather have an option, uh, not in December, I'd go to a January option, a call option, and I'd just wait. I'm sure you will at least get close to your money back at worst with a call option. Here you don't know. You'd have to sit through something that could be very ugly. So I hope that helps you. 
stay away just for now. If you aren't in, if you are in, please put some kind of a stop. You can always make money back, but it's really hard when the percentage decline. Like look at this MJ, uh, MJ, same thing. Look at the percentage decline just from uh, the beginning of, uh, not even the beginning, the middle of November. The alternate harvest ETF. Remember, we tried. We've had fantastic positions before on the long side, and then we've been trying, and it just doesn't work. It's just been a failure pattern. Now it's getting to the level where it's interesting. And look, there's your channel that I drew ages ago in the weekly chart. And all I'm saying is patterns repeat. That's why I'm going from one, one sector to another. Is this ready for a bounce? I see, my eye says it's ready for a bounce. There's a bill C on the MJ 12.19 up here to the city. Let's go back to UNG as it blows out. Yeah, the same for UNG about to be accepted. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, I'm just running through a whole bunch of questions came in. I, I don't want to lose track here. So let, let me just do this. I, I didn't finish the, um, the overview. So a GBTC, which is Bitcoin, Bitcoin is trying to rally a little bit. I'd say that I, after that PE top that we were expecting was GBTC, a peak D, and that was uh, beginning of November in the six, uh, 55 area. I said, I am expecting a pullback in the Bitcoin area, and the Bitcoin area says that it will pull back and we should see more trading volatility in gold. So we've seen that, but 
yesterday I got asked about uh, something and I went to uh, Ethereum saying that the way I'm looking at Ethereum and as opposed to Bitcoin, it's something very different. And because of that, it's there's a chance that it could retest Ethereum, E-T-H-E is the symbol, uh, the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, uh, that highlight was made on the 10th of November of 4740. I'd said, I think we're going to, we're going to test that and that's where the test comes. What happens? And the question I came from a subscriber who is also a uh, chapel waiver, done almost all my courses, uh, all the way to stage level three, had a good question and said, what about the weekly chart? Well, I have a technique that I, I discovered years ago, created really, where I call it the overlapping wave. What happens if you go to a peak A and a peak B or even a C? and then pull back. But underneath it, you have what I call gray peak A and a gray peak B. It doesn't take out the low, so it's still in place. And then all of a sudden, it takes out the previous high that was actually uh, um, disconnected from the from the trade at that point because it started to fail. That's the weekly 25th of, the, of December high in Ethereum of 2020. It pulls back to the 14 period moving average, starts to walk the 14 period moving average, makes peak A, peak B. There's a trend line resistance and then it snaps out of it. Well, the rule of thumb is an overlapping wave should go to a C if it's at a B, at least a C, but then it should even go to a D. Well, it went to the C, pulled back very sharp. It, it went right to the support level of the trend line that was the, I, I love this. I mean, technical analysis, it's, just, it's so beautiful. It goes right to the support and treats it as a, a support level. And it goes gray peak A from that low. It goes gray peak A. Look, oh, I moved this over. Oh, I should have done this. Sorry, gray peak A, gray peak B, gray peak C right here. I just didn't type it in, but I had this all notated. Great big C all underneath the previous high. And that was the high that was made. I know these are words and my eyes, if I'm listening, would blaze over. But if you're looking at this, I, I just like the like, uh, code in the dense is, Wilds, how, how do these lines know? Look, great big C it means that when the price goes over from the, the high of the third of the week of the third of September, 38.69, it activates a leg D, a blue D, because it's already the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode, implying that you should go to at least a D. But then once that leg D takes out the previous high, the previous high of 43.23 back on the 14th of May, the two together combine for a powerful move to the upside to go to at least a D, and then it pulls back. And where does it usually pull back to? That's the rule. This is the Chapman Wave methodology. This is the rule that it should pull back to or just under that previous breakout high of peak C, 43.23. What does it do? It pulls back to 40. It pulls back under that. It goes to 38.25. And right now it's at 46.60, about to test again. The high of 47, well, 4708 is a high today. The 47, was it 40? Yes, 4740 high of November the 10th. Uh, it's just amazing how these things work. So that's why I said yesterday, I can't remember who was talking about it. And I said, I would prefer for you to be looking at Ethereum and not Bitcoin. You remember we had a call yesterday? And look at this action. Look at this action. And now you've got what? You've got this pattern right here. These patterns repeat, oh, you can have your template and you just follow the template. Look, I shouldn't say that because today I was following my template, but I put my stop in a little too 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 quickly. And that Don E E Mini did exactly what I wanted. It went from the 16 level all the way to uh, to what was it? Uh, 35, 46, 16, 43, 36. Anyway. So um so here's the pattern. Look, this is the reverse Y, it goes sharply higher, pulls back in the cup formation, sharply higher, the peak effort pulls back, and then it makes a cup formation. And not only that, you, I didn't draw this in because I didn't want to make it too complicated. What happens if the test of that becomes the same as the dreaded H? Does this become a Y, 
a positive Y formation that it just breaks right out. I think we got a little bit of resistance there. Oh, it was BKKT. Ah, that's right. We were looking at, let me just see what BKKT, probably running sharply today. No, stuck. That's what I said. Be careful. It's just stuck. It's at 1575. Yesterday we were looking at it, and I believe it was at 1650 or something. Yes, it lowered down to 1576. I had said, check out Ethereum, because that's the one that's moving. So now we're looking at, you remember the, what I did in the, uh, the, way we, the way we've been shorting because of the left side and the right side? Not the price time match, but the technicals. Well, look at this. The MACD, look how strong it was uh, when it made the high at that 48, uh, 47, 40 level in the Ethereum uh, back around about the 9th of November. And look now, it's starting to rally, but it's just, yeah, the MACD is just still negative. It's just trying to cross positive. If it does cross positive, that can give the oomph to move up. But this is where you've got to be the most careful. Doji Candle, four weeks ago at peak D, pulls back. Now it's a retest. Uh, the technicals of the weekly are still very strong. That's why I'm saying this is probably, for me, the better of the others. Uh, let is just, uh, and I want, oh, question about you. Not about you or me, but you, the symbol you. Unity Software and Games Creating Software made a round number high, all-time high of 200. Whoa, 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 whoa. It made a round number high, but I think it took it out. 210, oh my, oh, I can't believe this technical analysis. In the Chamberlain methodology, since way before the October 19th crash of 1987, I've been studying round numbers. I, I don't want to go into it right now, but round numbers became, on that day, the most important thing that I, I could ever believe um, on crash Thursday, uh, crash Monday, um, 1987. So, um, that was the clue that we were going to go higher for the next 18 months in your all-time highs. Uh, round number high. So this is a round number, second round number. Peak D had a 207 round number high, all-time high. 210 round number all-time high on the uh, 17th or whatever that was. And then it had, oh, I wrote it in. I made like I didn't even know. I, I had it all written in. There it is. In red, right there. And a 193 round number open on the 18th of November. Unbelievable. And look at it. It pulls back to the 169 level. This is you. Uh, the question is, where would you be thinking of getting it? Please hold off. Let's just see. I'd rather be buying higher highs than lower lows. So hold off. Dow's up 352. S&P's up 62. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So in the dead, a question came up about VST, VistaCore. Uh, VistaCore is not VisaCore, it is Vista. Vista, I can't remember what, is that the printing company? I can't, VistaCore. Anyway, it's actually fantastic. It's up 1.11 at, uh, let me see, 1.11 at 20.98. And what we're looking at is higher highs and higher lows. Look, this is exactly what you want to see. And now I'm going to draw just a quick, uh, a trend line right there, and that says, all right, let's see how it, it breaks above this little mini uh, rising wedge formation. And I like it very much. The MACD is just flat but good. Stochastic's not that good, 58%. Um, unbalanced volume's lousy, but the 9 is above the 14, and that's really what's helping it. And if you're looking at the weekly, I would have to put this as a new leg C as we, we're talking. Um, and I, I like this very much. Uh, what, 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 that's not to say that it's very close to testing resistance. And then, okay, this is a really interesting chart. Why? Because the price, you remember, I've always said price is the arbiter of the trend, not all the technicals. I've seen the MACD come down for months in certain stocks or indexes, and yet the price just kept going higher and higher. That's why I like to put the potpourri together. You just need, you need to know what's the most important for me right now. Look at that green nine meter period moving average. It's just been absolutely fantastic. It, it's closed only once below it in the last uh, couple of weeks. And even that big gap down and gap up uh, back on these, around about the fifth, sixth, seventh, or whatever it was. Let me tell you right now what it was. It was the fourth of November. Got a retest and very few times as a close under the, underneath either the 9 or the 14. This is good action. And what I'd like to do is right now is, since you haven't told me yet, I'm just going to put in Vista Core. Vista Core does, whoops, does what? Uh, this is called technology company specializing in security ah, security systems. I love the whole idea of security systems, and uh, I think that's what's that's what's doing it right now, uh, right there. So what have we got? We've got. I'll just put security systems. Security systems. Nice. Sys. Gosh, spelling, Mr. E-M. All right. So it's acting very well. So if you're along, I would just do nothing about it. It's acting extremely well. If you're looking to add, just have a little patience. If it gets back into this up channel, uh, it, look, today's lows, 20.16. The high is 21 round number. The, the previous high was 20.97. So it just made a leg. I'm calling this an F for now. Um Wait, 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 A, B, that, wasn't, that was an E slash B. 
So sometimes I have the alternate count, but I'm just doing it to say, what if I'm wrong? That's really more than anything else. And this is an F slash C. And it just says, yeah, maybe it's an F, but everything about it looks very strong. It should be a C. And that looks like that was a, a, the top at peak D, and this could be a brand new buy. There's nothing to do here. It's acting well. Uh, the 120-minute chart and VST, VST, uh, VST at 20.93 up a dollar six. Nice spike. It's peak. I believe that's peak. And this is only a peak. This is very good action. I like it very much. Uh, the monthly chart says there's a lot, to, a lot to go. If it can ever trade for a full two days within a week, because the monthly chart, I'm going to a shorter time frame in the Chabwave Roman inverted Roman candle right there. Uh, if we can trade in the 2175 area and hold there for two closes on a daily basis, I su suggest to you that it could even try for 24 in December or early January. Uh, but uh, it has to hold support in the meantime. All right, that's that. Uh, what do we want to look at here? Uh, so the question is, uh, Basil, isn't the SMHs flashing us the all lights on green for the economy? Um, Yes, uh, Pat, uh, first, uh, two, two questions at once. Hack, which is the actual cybersecurity um, e ETF, monthly chart looks very good. Weekly chart looks like that is a peak, and that's the reason I'm going to get to it in a moment. I don't want to lose track. I want to finish up uh, with why I think that this rally has a little bit more in the way of legs to the upside. Um, and, yeah, Hack, it's certain stocks that are doing it. P-A-N-W. Yeah, Palo Alto Networks, almost at an all-time high. Leg, leg F slash, well, there's a leg D right here. Uh, it had fairly good news on the earnings the other day. It hasn't done very much. Um, and let's see. So it's D in the, in the daily. It's leg D in the weekly. And leg E in the monthly. Palo Alto Networks trading down $1.87. Yeah, this is a very select market. I mean, some things are doing very well. It's holding the, the all-time highs, uh, but it's not breaking out right now. So all I can say is the SMHs, that's going to be the clue for us because at some point there's going to be some news that either is really positive because it says, wow, chips are coming in, everything's good, or it's going to say, whoops, be careful. Now we could see a chip, a chip glut. I don't know. Whatever it is, we're watching the SMHs break above. 318.82 was the all-time high. SMH semiconductor ETF starts to close in the 320, 321 area. That is fantastic action. Then I agree with you. Now I'm going to do what I wanted to do before. Um, within the context of the VIX index, because yesterday I had a chap wave high trend gauge, it suggested that there should be a 9 to 11 point uh, rally within two sessions. That should help the market. It does, sounds like nothing right now when you're up 69. 69 points. That's not the issue. The issue is that it said that there should be a rally, number one. Number two is the volatility index hit this. Is, look at this. On the weekly chart, all these levels in the high 20s for at least since April, April, May, have been trigger points for a sharp move to the downside, even though the VIX sometimes held for a little while longer. So I'm suggesting to you, and one of the reasons why I really thought deeply about it, going long, uh, uh, some of the indices, I said, no, no, there is just the weekly charts are suggesting it's very select what we're looking at right now, and that when the select, move, the select stocks like apples in leg C, when they finally turn down, maybe that's where we start to see the best of the best, like the Qs and the SMHs, start to digest big gains for whatever bad news comes about in that sector. While maybe the Dow and the Russell start to find some support, to have a good, nice counter trend rally. So that's going to be very important to me. Um, so a question I came, so I just wanted to say the VIX is indicating that there could be a rally. It doesn't have to go that high, but it could hold the markets up very much more than one would expect with the, if you listen to the news, all right? And I wouldn't be surprised if that's an internal low that we've just seen, and now we have to wait for the residual low. And the residual low could be lower or at the same height or even higher. It has to be at the emotional part because the technical work has been done. So let's do that. Then we're going to look at SMT. 
SMT, uh, this is for Nick. Uh, SMT holding very nicely, but I think it's still in the digestive phase. We'll be back with SMT up 4.81 at 90.47. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey folks, let's just do this quickly because I, uh, if you're in SMTC, which you didn't say, uh, oh, uh, I'm always skeptical about a report today. I have an almost 4% gain since last week. Wouldn't mind selling today. Appreciate your comments, Nick. Uh, Nick, this is a, a real move. And in fact, if you had sold earlier, it was up in the 92 area. Now it's at 90.41. I, I like it's gone from an S to an L in one day. And I'm just saying that I like this very much. Uh, I should have checked out. I didn't have time. SM, SMTC, which is Semtech Corporation. I can't remember in where, where this is uh, in the actual economy. You know, I like this. I, I think that your idea is good. Why not take a little bit off right now? You've got a nice gain. And then let's see what happens tomorrow. I think there's just enough energy to see it attempt at least to get back to the 92.15 high tomorrow if the market actually holds nicely through the close today, which I think is going to happen, and then uh, follows through tomorrow. And then maybe by Thursday or Friday, we have to start to see whether or not weakness is coming in. Or, in fact, we could have a, a, a three-week rally before we pull back. I, this, is the, this is the point where the market tells us the most. As I'm looking at it right now, the reason why I didn't want to go long this morning, anything uh, other than a particular stock which had exactly what we wanted, it pulled back, 
to our entry point, and then it moved up sharply, a good few percentage points, and now it's pulling back, which is what I was saying to myself. What if during this period that this particular stock has been going up, ignoring the market, now the market finds leadership, and all of a sudden people don't have to stay in this particular area. What happens then? So we, we're in this um, new position alongside. Just I think now is the time just to handle what you've got. So I'm saying I like this at 90 point SMTC. I take a little bit off, but I would not. I don't know if I'd get out of the whole thing because it's trying to turn. It could fail from here, peak in the daily, but I, I love the weekly charts holding very well. So I'll do a little bit more on this when we get to the close today, 3 to 4 o'clock when I do the Tom O'Brien Show. Stay tuned. You've got Larry. You've got a wonderful programming all day. Larry, think or swim. Steve Rose, Dave.